Okay, in this video we're going to look at combining several surfaces and try to graph a region that is bounded by several different surfaces. So before we get into the mechanics of doing that, we want to talk a little bit about what that means. Um, so a bounded region would be a region that does not extend forever. Um, so something like a paraboloid that goes up forever, like one of those bowls that kind of extends forever, or a plane that extends off forever uh, in all the directions, uh, those would be examples of unbounded regions. Um, this region is going to be bounded so that we have basically an an enclosed region where all of these surfaces form sides of some uh, closed region. So something like a box or a ball would be things that are enclosed and um, that's what we're looking for here. So it's not going to be exactly that shape but uh, should be some sort of closed in thing. So when we have several surfaces like this, uh, there are a couple different ways to do it and especially when you're just getting started, it can be um, helpful sometimes to graph each of these separately or at least think uh, really briefly about what each of the surfaces looks like sort of separately before you try to put it all together. So I'm going to do uh, some little mini sketches over here to the side of each of the surfaces individually and fortunately on this one all these surfaces are fairly simple to recognize what they are. Um, X equals Z squared that is missing the Y so that's easy to see that that's going to be a cylinder that extends in the Y direction. Um, so in the XZ plane we're going to have a parabola that opens along the X axis and then that parabola is going to be extended in the Y direction to get our cylinder. So it looks sort of like this trough uh, turned on its side opening uh, toward us in the positive X direction. Um, x equals 4 minus 2z squared is also going to be a parabolic cylinder that extends parallel to the y-axis. Uh, so in the xz plane this is going to be a parabola. It's going to open in the negative x direction and the vertex is going to be at 4 on the x-axis. Uh, another thing that might be important is the z-intercepts. Uh, if I think about when x is 0 what the z-values will be. Uh, they'll be plus and minus square root of 2. I'm just going to label the top one there. Um, so the parabola would open in the negative x direction and then the cylinder will extend parallel to the y-axis. So if I draw those little extensions, got a copy of my generating curve, I get this uh, parabolic cylinder. So one thing is that we want a region that's enclosed by those two things. Um, so essentially we're going to have some region in between the parabolic cylinder opening towards us and the parabolic cylinder opening to the back. At some point it might be helpful to figure out what either the x or z coordinates are of the places where those two things intersect. Um, and so there are a couple of ways to do that. I can think about it geometrically or I can work uh, a little bit on the algebra and think about it algebraically. Uh, essentially you'd be looking at solving a system of equations and you could solve for either x or z and um, figure out what the other value is. Uh, since these are both equations solved for x, I'm going to start by um, substituting in one of the equations for the other or we could also say we're setting them equal to each other since they're the, both equal to x. And when I solve this I'll get the z values and of course once I know the z values I can figure out the x values as well. Um, so if I add 2z squared to both sides I'll get 3z squared equals 4 divide through by 3 and then square root both sides I'll get z equals plus or minus um, square root of 4 thirds or 2 over square root 3. Um, so those will give us the z values where those two parabolic cylinders intersect and if I want I can find the x values uh, for those as well. Plug into either of the two equations. x equals z squared is probably the easiest. Um, so 2 over square root of 3 squared plus or minus really in there but when I square it it'll become positive so uh, when x is 4 thirds is where those two parabolic cylinders will intersect. 
So what I want to sketch on my um, overall graph over here, uh, my final graph, uh, I want to show a region that's enclosed by those two parabolic cylinders. And then, um, so that'll kind of form a front and a back to my surface. What I don't really have from those graphs I'm looking at is a left and right side. So I want to think about the other two equations and make sure I'm clear about what those are. Um, y equals zero, hopefully that one's not too hard for you, that is just the xz plane. So that gives us kind of a left side to our region and y equals three will be parallel to the xz plane but over here at y equals three. So I'm just going to go draw a little portion of that plane over here at y equals three, little um, flat surface that's parallel to the xz plane. So those two planes will give us a left and right side to our region. I'm going to draw a little rough sketch here um, on top of one of my other graphs and then um, we'll go ahead and fill in a little bit better copy. So the two parabolic cylinders will intersect um, one opening in one direction, one opening in the other direction and kind of in the front and the back and those will extend and then the sides on the left side and right side will be formed by those planes at y equals three and then on the back side at y equals zero, or on the left side at y equals zero. So what I want to sketch over here on my final graph is um, really just the portions of those planes and cylinders that we're really interested in, the region that's bounded by those. So um, one thing is that I probably don't want to sketch uh, those parabolic cylinders beyond those places where they intersect. So I want to think a little bit about this uh, positive two over square root of three and get kind of a decimal approximation for that. That's a little bit beyond one and x equals four thirds, be about one and one third. So when I sketch those parabolas, I'm going to start by just sketching the portion in the xz plane of those two parabolas. One of them has vertex at the origin and opens forward. Um, so I'm going to go to about x equals four thirds and y equals, I'm sorry, z equals approximately uh, two over square root three and then x equals four thirds, z equals negative two over square root three. Okay, so there's part of one of the parabolas, the one that opens forward. And then the other parabola that opens backward, vertex at four and I'm just going to connect back to those two points. Notice that one of those parabolas is narrower than the other. I'm going to emphasize those intersection points. Those should line up vertically. Mine are a little bit off there. All right, and then I'm going to draw some extensions um, for my cylinder. Extensions parallel to the y-axis. And I want to go three units over is all the farther I want to go. So perhaps I went a little too far on that first extension. Let me erase that and try that again. Okay, so I'm looking at my y-axis, what I've scaled off as a distance of three here. I'm going to extend over three units um, from the vertex and from these two intersection points over about three units. And then from there, I'm going to draw copies of those two generating curves. So there's the parabola that opens backwards and then the parabola that opens forwards. There's a copy of that. Okay, I might want to draw one more extension. We talked about this a little bit in class, sort of that vanishing place where the um, cylinder curls back around. Another extension there to show the bottom of it. And I guess I did okay at the top here. That um, intersection point is essentially the same as the vanishing point on top. I'm going to do a little bit of shading here to make it clear what surfaces are what. Um, so the parabolic cylinder that opens backward, I'm going to draw some contour lines to indicate that surface. And then maybe some rulings showing that it extends in the y direction. So there's a portion of that I stopped shading where it would vanish back behind. Um, 
the plane that's on the right side here would be flat so I'm going to shade that with rulings that are just parallel to the y-axis and then I don't know maybe some parallel to one of the other axes either the z-axis or the x-axis okay and unless these surfaces were uh, transparent that's really the only part we would be able to see um, sometimes because uh, if the surfaces are not transparent you really can't see the entire surface it can be helpful to label uh, these surfaces so I might um, indicate over here that the right side of this surface is formed by the plane y equals 3 and back behind here on the left side that is y equals 0 and then kind of curving around the front uh, forms the top and bottom on the front is the parabolic cylinder x equals 4 minus 2z squared and the part curving around and forming the back would be the cylinder x equals z squared so especially sometimes on these ones where we're looking at uh, sketching something that's bounded by several different surfaces because you wouldn't really be able to see all those surfaces labeling them uh, with these comments can be helpful um, the other thing that can be helpful is to shade different surfaces in different colors or in different ways so that you can distinguish between which part of it is the plane and which part of it are the cylinders uh, one final thing that's helpful uh, when I started out I had the parabolic cylinders and I drew kind of more uh, of those parabolic cylinders than I actually ended up with over here on the final graph if I'm interested in a region bounded by several surfaces then I really don't care about the portion of those surfaces that would extend beyond that region so one important thing here is that I left off the portions of the planes and the parabolic cylinders that are outside of my region um, just because they would be distracting and they would make it difficult to see what part we are actually interested in that's something that a lot of students uh, don't do is that they'll graph kind of all of the different surfaces and then it can be difficult to tell which part of it you're actually interested in